Hello everyone, it's Susie, Aka Crypto Granny. Hope you're all well. Um, do subscribe please because and put comments because we are having uh, some competitions in the next two weeks and we're going to be giving away some high value uh, wallets and also a bit of XRP as well. So it's definitely worthwhile, okay? So my um, talk today is about Ripple XRP is the best. It's the best in technology as far as I'm concerned. Uh, it is the best cryptocurrency project out there. And to think that some of these DeFi's have seriously gone up to $10,000 or $12,000 and not really on much, just the fact that they have very low uh, supply of coins and they don't seem to have any business model at all or any revenue, just absolutely flabbergasts me. It's even the same with, say, Ethereum ETC, you know, two hacks. Uh, OKEx basically lost $5.6 million due to the Ethereum hacks and is now thinking about delisting uh, Ethereum Classic. But the thing is, Ethereum Classic is still at $7.12. So it doesn't make a lot of sense. The cryptocurrency market is not looking at fundamentals. In normal market, Ethereum Classic should have been on its knees. The price should have been down at least $4, okay? So when you think about it, the cryptocurrency market is not looking at fundamentals. Ethereum Classic still went up even though the technology is flawed and OKEx, which is one of the largest suppliers of liquidity to Ethereum Classic, is thinking about delisting them. If you delist something, it's actually going to lose its value, which is not great. So today, uh, again, looking at XRP, I say, you know, please be kind to yourself, your family and friends, your putty cats, dogs and animals, the fauna, and just kind of people in the world just to make this a better place. So don't forget to just, uh, subscribe and leave us with... Uh, you know, leave us with some nice comments because we really like that. So what I'm looking at today is Rip Pay, Ripple Payments, which is absolutely incredible. This is going to lead to billions of users. Uh, also, Ripple and Flare Networks. Uh, the, the Ripple are building in the Philippines and it's a $34 billion remittance market. SBI, 14% uh, of SBI has been acquired by Sumitomo Mitsubishi, Mitsui Financial Group, which is a, an interesting deal. Uh, Australia is moving to a cashless society. Banks have shut branches and they're getting rid of ATM, uh, ATM machines. And uh, as the coronavirus pushes Australians co closer to no cash at all. Uh, also, I'm looking at the acting banking controller, what he said about a case for Ripple and XRP. And XRP's brilliant technology as per American economist Jeffrey Tucker and also I want to just cover XRP is not a stable coin and it's not a central banking digital coin. There seems to be a lot of misunderstanding about what is a stable coin and what is a central bank digital currency, okay? So we'll go through that. Uh, RipPay is incredible, okay? Now, uh, Ripple themselves have powered a new app on the Ripple network where you can actually pay with XRP over different messaging platforms, okay? Now, currently, you can uh, pay anyone, if you're a part of this RIP pay, by just saying pay uh, Crypto Granny $10, you know, pay Crypto Granny $10 and it'll go directly to me. And it, at the moment, it's available through Slack, it's available through Discord, it's available through uh, Telegraph, but going forward, it'll also be available on WhatsApp, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Signal, Keybase and Kick. Okay, now this is incredible because effectively if you can do this and you can settle something cash within seconds, uh, Ripple themselves with the use of XRP could get billions and billions of clients. It's just a fact, okay? Uh, this is unbelievably incredible and you need to be aware of this. Anyone that is at the center of Ripple and XRP are just crazy because seriously, this is groundbreaking technology. And there's, uh, there's a link there if you want to have a look at that. I reference all my work, okay? If you look at the users, right, Slack themselves have 10 million active users. Telegram boasts over 400 million users. Discord and Matrix, 130 million and 10 million respectively. If Ripple and XRP then go uh, and do it on Twitter, this new app on Twitter, WhatsApp and Signal and Facebook, Facebook's allegedly has around 2 billion users, 1 to 2 billion users. Twitter, on average, has about 330 million users a month. These figures are staggering. And WhatsApp has a monthly user of about 1.5 billion. 
So potentially with this new app, Rip Pay, uh, Ripple could basically get all these users going forward. And that story is compelling. Uh, fundamentally, Ripple and XRP are the best coin and technology out there fundamentally. And people out there saying anything different, honestly, just don't know what they're talking about, okay? So if we look at Ripple and Flare Networks, now this is basically something else. Ripple is also going to put on smart contracts. They're trying smart contracts with Flare Networks to be in competition with any other platform that has smart contracts. And you might think Ethereum has smart contracts, clearly. Um, EOS has smart contracts. Uh, you know, who else? Cardano has smart contracts. Waves has smart contracts. Tron. So Ripple now are going to be in competition with anyone else that has smart contracts. And they're actually, um, you know, joint partners with Flare Net Networks to the to launch the Coston Test Network, okay, Testnet. And that puts them in a very interesting thing because it means basically they've got more tools to add to their technology. Not only that, we know that Sologenic went on to their platform so they can actually do ICOs as well. They're going to the music business, they've got Coil, all sorts of things. So Ripple's technology has so many different tools to it. It is just amazing. And they will, as far as I'm concerned, hand on heart, you know, honestly, they will, as far as I'm concerned, be the number one coin uh, for payments in the world. Absolutely. Okay. I'm, I'm, without a doubt, that is my honest belief. So if we look at the next, uh, the next topic I've got is building the Philippines. They've made it very clear they want to build in Asia. Now, the Philippines has a $34 billion international remittance business. In other words, Philippines travel all over the world. You know, if you go to Dubai, you, there's a lot of Philippines that work in Dubai in the airport and they send all their money home, okay? Uh, you know, Philippines send their money all home. They work everywhere else and they send money home. So this market is a huge market for Ripple and they are basically getting bigger and bigger in this market. Um, they've also got uh, another client there called Send Friend and they're basically building more and more solutions. When the Philippines use Ripple's technology, they save anything from 50% to 70% because of what the banks charge in foreign currency transactions and to bring it back to the Philippine uh, currency, okay? So if we look at the next thing we've got, uh, SBI, 14% was acquired by Sumitomi Mitsubishi Financial Group. Now, who are Sumitomi UFG Financial Group? They're huge, okay? They're one of the world's fifth largest bank by total assets. You know, we're talking about here 2.4 trillion in assets or more. Um, the, these guys are absolutely huge, seriously. And these guys basically have taken over 14% SBI holding. And we know SBI is a big proponent of Ripple and XRP, okay? They're even paying their clients XRP as dividends, right? And we know that they're connected to R3 as well. Okay, so the thing is, Sumitomo Mitsubishi Financial Group wanted to promote the distribu distributed ledger technology platforms in various fields of business, okay? And that's what they want to do. And they're basically launching this uh, the settlement service all over their businesses and all over the place. Now, these guys have literally about 180 offices globally, and there will be, obviously, connection between SBI, R3, and Sumitomo Mitsubishi Financial Group, okay? These guys have a lot of power and they have a lot of power to use Ripple and XRP and that is can only be good for the utility of XRP, okay? Absolutely. Now, if we look at uh, uh, this story, Australia's are moving to a cashless society. I bring this one up because Commonwealth Bank of Australia, and this is the source here, uh, was looking at Ripple technology way back in 2015, is still looking at Ripple technology and basically, they, they use it internally between their subsidiaries, okay? The CBA, Commonwealth Bank of Australia, it literally has $26 billion in revenue or more every year. It has trillions of assets. It's the largest bank in Australia. And basically, these guys have been using Ripple and XRP since 2015. I believe Commonwealth Bank will be the first to launch Ripple's technology and XRP because they're the biggest... Uh, providers of foreign currency in the country, 
they have all the corporate treasuries that need to buy and sell foreign currency. And these guys, as far as I'm concerned, will be the first to implement the technology for all their businesses, not just their subsidiaries. Now, the reason why this is relevant is because, as it says, the major banks, being the Commonwealth Bank here, um, Westpac, National Australia Bank and ANZ, they're all closing down their ATM machines because of COVID. People don't want to touch cash anymore. And that's a global phenomenon. And also they're uh, closing down branches, okay? So everything, the old banking system with SWIFT, the way things used to operate with the old banking system, you know, going to a bank, that's history. That's gone. The next generation won't even go into a bank. Everything will be done by fintech, okay? Fintech, not SWIFT, but by Ripple and XRP, okay? So, you know, ATMs are closing down, right? And also banks are closing down. And as I said, the CBA will, in my mind, be the first to launch Ripple and XRP across all its businesses because it has the largest book of foreign currency in Australia. And they do, we, you know, they do a lot, okay? A lot. So if we go to the next story, and this is pretty interesting, the acting banker controller, and this was uh, on the 19th, just recently, there was an um, interview with Julie, Julia Chatley, and I love her interview, she's great, uh, with Brian Brooks, the, head of, the acting head of the Office of the Controller of the Currency. And he basically said the global payment system of uh, SWIFT, which is a 1973 clunky old system, uh, is just a shocker. You know, it cannot do real-time gross settlement across all different uh, clients. It's, it's just terrible. And it's a legacy system from 1973. He said, if you wanted to move money from America to Australia, it, the fastest way to do it is basically put it in a suitcase and fly to Australia. And I can tell you, flying to Australia, back to America or vice versa, it's a long way. We are a long way away from America and Europe, believe me. Um, Brooks also further stated that China, Singapore and certainly the UK have already adopted real-time payments, right? And the US is lagging. And unfortunately, the US is lagging rather badly, okay? Because we know what China is doing with their uh, digital currency. Um, he did say that they're introducing a new payments charter and that in the last 10 years, a lot of payments are not going through the banking system like PayPal and Square. But I've got to tell you, PayPal is a shocker. If I go to, uh, you know, if I get money from anyone, a client from PayPal, and I go to send it to my bank account to spend it, it takes two or three days to get there. And my frustration is just no end. And then, you know, sometimes, you know, there'll be a problem and they won't release the funds or then they'll charge me. And honestly, PayPal is so expensive. It's a joke. It's just not great. Now, Brian Brooks, my understanding was the former head of Coinbase Global. He didn't mention any system, but certainly what he was describing, he was saying that you know, payments could be done by a private company, i.e. Ripple, and payments can be done instantly, and that pretty much is Ripple, okay? Absolutely Ripple. And as far as I'm concerned, that's basically you know, a very strong point. I mean, banks now can hold cryptocurrency. Now, if they don't do anything about their technology changing, they are just going to miss the boat and they're going to go down, down, down in price because seriously, the Bank of America is doing something. They're actually using Ripple's technology and my understanding is XRP, but other banks are just going to miss the eight ball. They're just going to be so far behind the curve. It's going to be a joke. Okay. That's a fact, right? If we look at uh, XRP's brilliant technology and Ripple's brilliant technology, we know it's absolutely brilliant. It is groundbreaking technology. Okay. Ripple has never had a hack. With 50 million ledger transactions going through, it's never had a hack. Uh, American economist Jeffrey T Tucker says, Ripple's technology is absolutely brilliant. You know, it, and he's right. For the person on the street, you know, uh, you, know you, you get instant settlement of cash, right? And I agree with this guy. There's your reference there. Um, also, I want to cover a lot of people think XRP is a stable coin or, or a central bank digital currency. Now, people don't understand what a stable coin is. A stable coin is not XRP. XRP is not a stable coin. A stable coin is like Tether, which will have the US dollars behind it 
and Tether is supposed to operate one to one to US dollar behind it. A stable coin will be, you know, fiat, fiat behind the stable coin backed by fiat, okay? Or it could be backed by gold as a commodity, or it could be backed by another cryptocurrency. But the point is the ratio be one to one. The coin itself, the ratio is one to one, and it can deviate from one to one. We've seen that with Tether. So for example, if Tether's $1 UST, we've seen it go down to 90 cents and we've seen it go to 103 cents, right? So it's not stable. You know, the ratio is supposed to be stable, but the coin itself, right, is backed to a currency that is not stable. The US yen is going down, down, down. So if the US yen keeps going down from 105.26, which it is today, and it's going to crash through, you know, 100, you know, the stable coin will be one to one to a declining currency, okay? A declining currency. XRP is not a stable coin. XRB sits alone as its own coin with nothing behind it but the technology of Ripple. I hope I'm making myself clear there. It is not a stable coin, right? Completely different animal, completely different animal. Also, the name stable coin is wrong because the stable coin, as I said, has a one-to-one -one ratio with either gold or, you know, US yen or Euro US or whatever it might be. And it goes with that whatever that underlying is, right? The underlying physical Euro US or US yen. And again, if, if the US is going down, you're going to lose value, okay? If you're in a stable coin and the US is going down, which it is, okay? Now, central bank digital currency, again, is not XRP. The central banks issue digital currency rather than physical cash, okay? And it could be the Chinese yuan, it could be the US dollar. It's still fiat but it's just done digitally, okay? It's not done with physical paper money. It's just done digitally. Again, a completely different story. It doesn't stop the problem of governments like the US that keep issuing more and more paper into the system and then they decide to have a digital currency US. The problem's still the same. They're just transacting, you know, with technology being digital. But if the currency keeps going down, you know, your currency is still going to go down with the central bank digital coin, okay? So I hope you understand that. They've still got the fiat, fiat currency problem where they may not basically, um, you know, settle cash instantly, right? And they've still got that problem. So again, XRP is not fiat currency. It's its own currency. It's not a stable coin and it's not, you know, a centralised bank digital coin and it has its own technology that settles cash instantly i hope that's clear guys really so that's my disclaimer guys please take that as food for thought, thought please do subscribe please put a comment because i want you to subscribe so you can be in the win for you know wallets that we've got which are valued at more than 150 us plus we're going to give away some xrp as well so subscribe you know um like Press the bell, whatever you do. I'm getting into this marketing thing. I've got my crypto granny thing on here. Uh, I've got all the things happening and everything's going on. And look, we're going to have this um, competition in the next couple of weeks. And what it will be, I'll give you a hint, is you'll have to look at two videos I've done recently where there's been some errors, okay? And there's been some big ones, which some people have pointed out already. But, but that's fine. Uh, and, uh, you know, we look forward to that. Okay, guys, I'll talk to you very soon. Thank you.